inch of accumulation. Highs in the 30s. Pullman 33, 38 in Lewiston. Concerning well number 10 connection. Oh. Okay. I guess you're ready to go now. All right. So We've just had a rehearsal, and now <laughs> <laughs> welcome, everybody, to the Public Works Finance Committee meeting for Monday, February 27, 2017. And uh, present today is uh, Gina Terusio on my right and Walter Steed on my left and Gary Reedner representing city management. Uh, we have an amended agenda today that has item number four added to it uh, with the, about the well number 10 connection and bid results, which we'll get to in a little bit. First item on the regular agenda is uh, approval of the Public Works Finance Committee February 13th minutes. I'm going to make a motion we approve that, those minutes. I agree. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, Approve the minutes. The second uh, item for consideration is consideration of fire station number two renovation and expansion evaluation study. And Dave, David Schott's going to uh, give us the particulars on that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, thank you. Uh, this is the consideration of the fire station number two renovation and expansion evaluation study. I thought I'd start off with the um, mission statement for the fire department. The department's mission is to preserve lives and property by providing service to prevent and control fires, accidents, and other emergencies while maintaining the highest standards of professionalism, efficiency, and effectiveness. In early 2016, about the time I started, the Moscow uh, Fire Department requested facilities to look into the possibility of options for the renovation and expansion of fire station number two in the future. Um, with that being the case, uh, we met with a consultant to get a scope of work and a fee proposal of $6,920.02 from Costellacom Architects. And we included this in the fiscal year 17 budget um, in the amount of $7,000. Uh, city staff is seeking authorization to proceed with the professional services agreement for the feasibility study of options for the renovation and expansion of Fire Station 2 in the future. The fire department goals for this were to evaluate the current facility for renovation and potential expansion, options for the site, potential upgrades to current living quarters, improve conditions and space for fire department use, aid in the future planning for the fire department, and explore potential improvements to the training facility. This is the only live burn facility in the area. The scope of work in the professional services agreement will include preliminary work, code review. Uh, I believe uh, this building has got some floodplain stuff with it. Um, review of as build um, existing plans and photos, building and site assessment, uh, working with city staff and the fire department for programming and scoping, uh, schematic design options, potential phasing, and uh, their cost model it uh, for budgeting reasons in the future. Our proposed timeline is uh, committee uh, today with council next week uh, with council approval. I uh, will issue notice to proceed to Castellacom Architects. Uh, we're looking for final completion towards the end of June. Our recommendation is approval of the professional services agreement uh, with Castellacom Architects uh, for $6,920.02 uh, for fire station number two renovation and expansion evaluation um, study. Um, and the action is the same um, or provide staff with uh, further direction. So with that, I'd be happy to take any comments or questions. Anybody have anything to That's ask a very David worthy about that? project yeah. in my book. Uh, um, David and maybe Gary, the city owns the land under all of that, correct? Yes. Okay. And the rural volunteer fire department owns the, what I'll call the north building? In 1996, uh, the Rural Fire District came forward and wanted to have, uh, wanted to know the city's willingness to provide them a building in close proximity to Fire Station Number 2. So uh, we deeded, the city deeded uh, by ordinance that 
footprint of, fire, of the rural fire station. The rest of the land is owned by the city. And the building we're talking about is the south building, which is the city's building? Yes, sir. Okay. I have no problem with it. I think it's a good idea. Me neither. <laughs> now, if you've um, toured that and seen the um, living quarters that are there, they definitely need some, a little bit of upgrading, a little more space for those guys. So, yeah, yeah I, would, uh, I would say that we're in agreement that we would uh, probably put this on the consent agenda for next Monday's meeting. Agreed. Mr. Rainer. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. The third item on our agenda today is a request authorization for a beer garden for the uh, 2017 Moscow Renaissance Fair. Dwight will tell us the particulars on that. Yeah. Well, good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the second year now that the uh, Ren Fair has requested a, a beer garden for their uh, Ren Fair that will take place on May 6th and 7th of this year. Um, there's a couple of minor uh, changes from what we had last year. Um, one being the extension of the hours um, going from on Saturday uh, to instead of closing at 4, they would like to close at 8 p.m. And on Sunday to close instead of 4 p.m. would be 5 p.m. Also moving the beer garden, it was way off in the uh, uh, northwest uh, corner, moving it down toward where the uh, stage is, which is uh, about the same location that the uh, uh, Trinity Fest uh, has theirs. Um, other than that, no changes. Um, they'll have uh, Allied Barton uh, Security Services handle the uh, uh, security for that. Um, this has been reviewed by uh, the police chief and the uh, city attorney uh, with no issues, and we had no, uh, no issues with the beer garden last year. And uh, so... Uh, requesting an authorization to go forward with this. I'd be totally in favor of that. There were no problems that went along with that. Gina? Um, am I correct in my assumption that there, the barriers that go along with the city is part of this as well? You know, the the, the crowd control ones that they well, have to... They, and my understanding is they are not going to use those, uh, the metal ones that we rent out. They're going to have their uh, the orange fence. La last year, I provided the rendezvous in the park fencing, some rendezvous in the park fencing for that, and the posts, and so I assume I'll be get a last minute call to do that again this year. Okay. So we did make that offer. They know it's there if, if they have any issues. Okay. So. Alder? Gary, on the barricades, yes. um, when we en enacted the use of those yeah. for beer garden barricades, did we require them? No. I didn't so know they were optional. They we changed the resolution to meet the spec, remember, because it was four feet tall. Right. Well, yeah. we, we had people that were fencing beer gardens exactly. inappropriately. Exactly. As long as they meet the requirements that those barricades meet, then they can utilize those. We don't require people to use those if they okay. don't want them. Second question to me. Uh, in the packet, it looks to me like the beer garden's in the northwest corner of this park. Well, there's there's two in there. One we, we put in there so you could see where it was at last year on the very last page. Okay. Um, you can see it, and it's, it's right by the stage in yellow. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. Jeez. I don't see it on there. Is your picture the same as my picture? Um, I don't have a computer with me. <laughs> I don't have any problem with what you're proposing. I'm just a little confused about where we're putting this thing. Yeah, the one in the packet's not correct. It's not the same as this one. Well, that's, that, yeah, I printed easier. that off, so. Two of them, one is from last year. Okay. This is the 216, and then this is the 217. We have one. Only one? One plan in the packet, and it is last year, so. For the, if this is going to council, need to pick it up and get it correct. Well, this this was printed oh, right off off of the. Uh, okay, what's we'll make sure it's so. yeah. correct. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's not in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, I apologize. It's not with ago. the first one. It's it's behind the agreement. Okay, we got. So it. they're not it's together. Enough. That's my problem. Right. Okay. okay, my yeah. problem. Thanks. We'll Thank arrange you. that so it's more Do. clear. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dwight. Um, right. How do you guys feel about that? Is it, you on a consent agenda that? I think that's fine. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, yeah. okay. 
Thanks, All right. Thank, Thank you, Dwight. You. Thanks, Dwight. All right. Now on to item number four, the um, amendment to the uh, today's agenda is the well number 10 connection, um, 2016 bid results and a contract award. And Bob Bavel is going to tell us about that. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, back in December, we uh, advertised a, a project to connect our new well number 10 into our uh, transmission line to uh, feed the wells. Uh, uh, over on uh, the east side of town. Um, we put that out for advertisement in December. We opened the bids February 7th. Um, the engineer's estimate for the main bid of that project, or for the main the base bid of that project, was $215,000 and some change. And uh, with the bid alternate, it was $194,000 with some change. We got uh, pretty fav favorable numbers when we opened those mm -hmm. bids. Uh, let's see, I think the uh, low bid was from Sandry Construction, um, and we were we were recommending doing the the bid alternate number one for one hundred and hundred and twenty eight thousand. 100. The base bid for Sandry Construction was 149,000 and some change. Uh, our recommendation was to go with the with alternate number one and uh, and award the contract to Sandry Construction. The project would build about uh, 800 feet of 16-inch ductile iron pipe down the old Montgomery Road um, property. That's now owned by the university. Um, do you guys? How how does that differ from from the? Uh, how does the alternate differ? Yeah, so it's, it, that's not very often you see an alternate make the price of a project go down. Uh, our uh, our standard, our typical construction for water line is to do a complete rock backfill. So uh, the the trench is backfilled with rock from the pipe all the way up to uh, subgrade. Because the university has no plan to um, turn this into a road, they have no plans of building anything over top of it. Uh, we feel comfortable doing that with backfilling it with native backfill, and so that's what build, bid alternate number one was. Was rather than doing rock backfill, we're going to do native backfill. Okay, and, and you're saying that the route of this would go down the the old Montgomery Access Road, mm -hmm. which is not in the city limits if I'm not wrong about that doesn't the city limits go down that road and around um, it, it's external to the city limits there's the a city I think it I think it does I think you I think you're right on that uh, at least a portion of it does um, and do have, potential do complications have, to that to where, where well, it's in the county do we have an easement we we do we do have an easement for it um at least it's in the works with the with the university yes yeah, yeah if i may i believe if i'm not incorrect that um when a street went in um the university purchased as the city did some of that property for montgomery so i believe the old montgomery driveway actually belongs to the university of idaho now and the current montgomery access accesses north of a street near the surgery center so that's why there's an easement from the university that had to be obtained for this <coughs> you don't see any complications no, with that sir. where it's not inside the city limits or anything nope should okay. be fine okay. and i believe it is within the city limits now well i remember recently when we, we showed here. when we showed that uh, map that showed the new city limits that that, that was excluded from it and it looked okay. kind of goofy and Maybe I do less. it is actually outside. The, the very southern end of the Montgomery driveway next to New Hall is within city limits. But from that point up to A Street, so there, is, there is a jog. Okay. It's still there, which is which. Right where the there. access yeah, yeah. is next to U Hall? Yeah, it's 20 north. feet wide. Okay. From uh -huh. Essentially U Hall north to A Street. Uh, but the university owns all of that ground <laughs> from A Street down to the highway. And so the easement that we have with the university is, is on that property. So. Okay. For me. 
less of showing my ignorance here, but is okay. the property behind the mall um, annexed to the city, the university property? Yes. Okay, so what is the reason that this little finger hasn't been annexed? At then? that time, the university did not own the Montgomery driveway. But they that do came now. later, but they do now. Okay, yes. should we then be working with them to get that annexed into the city? Certainly. Just to clean it up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, whether it's, you know, whether it's in the near term or when the university looks further no, north, perhaps, you know, picking it up at that point. Okay. Uh, there is some discussion about some annexation of Montgomery property that's out there right now mm -hmm. that perhaps that's an opportunity to address this as well okay thank you thanks for pointing that out okay thank you we, we don't Bob if I may your your low bidder is comfortable with his price yeah uh, yeah we've had I've had several conversations with him uh, since bid opening and uh, he has not uh, okay just want to not back he has not made any any requests to to do anything other than contract for it. Yep. Okay. And we have a bid bond. I have a bid bond. Yes. I, I suspect he saw the Class C backfill being taken as an alternate though, because he's the highest price for that item. <laughs> but that's okay. And totally still, well, he's still good and low. I'm good with it. Put yeah, it me too. Consent. Um, I don't know. I think I would put this on the regular agenda since there's a couple little pieces there that sure. probably should be explained. Yeah. Uh, we have a pretty light agenda next Monday, so that would be a – we can it certainly it do that. would take a lot of time just so everybody on the council is aware okay. of the little quirks in this and the potential annexation thing. Give Bob a chance to present on live TV in front okay. of the council. Okay. Do you want that? Thanks, Thanks Bob. Thanks. He's on live TV right now, I think. He is, but in front of council. <laughs> you didn't time that? <laughs> he got his hair done. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right, now uh, we're down to reports, and Nicole Baker's going to tell us about the water conservation plan and how that's working out. Good afternoon. Hi, Nicole. Okay, so I'm happy to be here to report our new program. The water conservation plan was originally developed, as everybody knows, to help reduce the pressure on our declining Grand Ronde Aquifer. So in February of last year, Council approved Package C of the water conservation plan as um, well as a 10-year plan period. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to get over this cold. Um, so there were four different packages that were presented to council. And the package C was recommended by staff as well as the Sustainable Environment Commission. What this package C did is it expanded from the um, current conservation program. It added a fixture rebate program. It added a irrigated lawn to wisecape rebate program and a landscape guidebook. <coughs> so um, since it was approved of February 1st of last year, any um, rebates from February 2nd to present are considered for approval. Implementation requires um, documentation from the customer as well as filling out a rebate form. And the landscape guidebook is pro in the process of um, being completed. So more um, looking at specifics of the fixture rebate program, it is available for single family, multifamily, and the um, commercial customer. Depending on what toilet or urinal for the commercial customer they take out and what they replace it with determines the amount that they are allowed for the rebate. Also, a single family household can uh, apply for up to two toilet rebates. Multifamily, it's one per unit. And commercial, you can have four toilet rebates as well as a urinal. Do-it-yourself and professional installations are, um, are considered for approval. <coughs> so here's a look at somebody that did a do-it-yourself installation. And they took out a toilet from 1956. That toilet at least uses five gallons per flush. Um, some of those can be up to seven for that old of a toilet. 
and they replaced it with a high-efficiency toilet. So they even went beyond um, the 1.6 code required toilet and went ahead and got one that um, installed one that's 1.28 gallons per flush or better. So this particular household can see a savings of 16,000 gallons from this toilet replacement. The lawn, um, irrigated lawn to <coughs> to Wisecape rebate is a $150 rebate. So as long as they're taking out 300 square feet or more of irrigated lawn, that rebate is $150. This is available for the single family, multifamily, and commercial customer. This, um, the approval process requires a pre and a post site inspection. This customer took out about 1,200 square feet of their, wise, of their irrigated lawn and transformed it to a wisecape. During the irrigation season, they can see about, once it's established, 9,300 um, 9, gallons saved for that irrigation season. As you can see, um, once your wisecape is established, you can save 50% or more on your irrigation needs. The Wisecape guidebook has been created. It will be available for free to our single family residents. Um, it has been completed in house and the edits have been completed in house. It's currently pending edits from the city of Moscow, or sorry, city of Pullman. This was a collaborative effort. So we all came together and the city of Pullman also has a Wisecape rebate, toilet rebate, and they also have ex extended their program to the Wisecape program. <laughs> so here's a look at the data for our fixture rebate program. For the calendar year of 2016, we had 64 households approved, 85 rebates um, for those 65 households. Of those 85 toilets, 11 of them were code toilets, so that's 1.6 gallons per flush that were replaced from um, the old ones. And then 74 were a high efficiency toilet. So they, those people were putting in, a, well, they'll see a savings of um, more than 1.28 gallons per flush or more. So um, as you can see, the average savings is 2.1 gallons per flush. And up here, I put what we estimated for cost from the conservation plan. We were looking at a code toilet when I presented to council. Uh, we said for every thousand gallons saved, it would cost $1.16 to the city for a code toilet. For a high efficiency toilet, $2.41. As you can see from last year, the cost is $1.47. That is um, with a savings of, we estimated savings for annual savings for all those toilets to be over 500,000 gallons. And the total cost to the city is a little over 8,000. So we figure out from that, the total cost per thousand gallons saved over the plan period. Now, if you want to consider the additional savings, that's our savings here. That is looking at metered flow to treat the potable water and the flow paste to treat effluent. So when we are not sending those thousand gallons of water through the system to treat it, to be able to flush it and then treat it out on the other end, we're looking at this program costing for this fiscal, or excuse me, for calendar year 2016 at 68 cents per thousand gallons saved. Does that make sense? There's a lot of numbers there, I know. Okay, so I did the same evaluation for <coughs> the irrigated lawn to Wisecape rebate. 14 total households completed their transformation from an irrigated lawn to a Wisecape in 2016. We have 14 pending. Some people take a, a few seasons to complete the project. Um, with this, with that 14 total households, we had over 22,000 square feet of irrigated lawn that was removed and replaced with a water efficient landscape. That means the average turf removal per customer um, was over 1,500 square feet. Now, if we look at what was estimated by the conservation plan, the cost was $2.42 per um, thousand gallons saved. Now, you'll see that that's half the cost for 2016. Now that is because we had where a few of the customers took out large quantities of grass. So that's going to vary from year to year. Um, we estimated, you know, to even be approved, you just have to take out 300 square feet. So we estimated around 800 for the conservation plan. So that we'll see a change with that over the years. Um, the toilet rebate will be a little bit more of a static number. 
Um, and again, with additional savings, we just considered potable metered flow savings because that water never would have made it to the um, water reclamation plant. Um, and that, with the savings, that's looking at 85 cents per thousand gallon saved cost to the city over the plan period. Okay. Before you leave that slide, if I might. <laughs> yeah. You, you said the, the bottom right hand corner, 36 cents. Yes. Is representing water that would never have made it to the plant? That is water that we don't have to pump. Mm -hmm. So we, ne I don't even consider. So F. It's not to the reclamation plant it's it's correct water pump from the well correct yes okay. yes yes because for the toilet irrigation water sorry go to the, right go to for the, the okay. toilets we consider it because it certainly makes it to the other end right for um and I, I didn't explain that well for the irrigation we are looking at that water cost of pumping from exactly. out of the ground okay yes and that would be uh, meter flow meaning we're not using the energy we're not using the chlorine the potassium permanganate we're not using those particular um Need, you know, needing those at all. So, um, the conservation plan is a living document. I currently don't think we. Uh, I think it's too soon to make any amendments to it. However, that is part of that was part of the plan that we need to consider that every year after we look at our data. I would say perhaps something that we might want to consider in the more near future, if we do want to consider increasing the program, is increasing the amount of allowable toilets per household. Um, right now we allow two per single family household. Some people have three, four, sometimes even five toilets. Um, I haven't had a lot of people that have requested more than two. I think maybe a, just a couple had changed out three toilets and they were happy to receive just the rebate for the two. Um, but then there's some other people that might have changed out all of the toilets had that incentive been there. And then with the multifamily units, maybe um, some of them are two bed or two bathroom units. Perhaps we want to extend it to that. So that would be a consideration. I, again, I think that we need a little bit more data. The program was very new. And our community has um, accepted it. It's been successful. We are looking to advertise on Facebook, and we're, you know we've done the newsletter. It's been. Um, covered by social media and the newspaper. So we're very excited that we had the response we did in 2016 and we're hoping for even more and have more of an aggressive advertising campaign for it in 2017. Nicole, if, I'm, if I might. <coughs> Go back to your last slide if you sure. would, please. This one or? If the, if the intent of the program is to get older toilets changed out, why would we limit it to so many per house or per apartment? Why would it not be a just yeah, however many you want? However to many you yeah. want to do, we'll we'll sure um, we'll pay for them. When I was looking at the different package op options for the conservation plan that I presented to council, inc having um, an increased amount of toilet rebates available was included um, as a pack part of package D. It came down to a cost effective. Um, um, pre, you know, wanted to present to council, this is something that we um, feasibly can afford, that we can roll out and have a successful program. And once we see what's working, let's change it and make it better if we want. So it came down to budget concerns and making sure that we had the um, resources in-house and financially to be able to be successful. So how much had the people that you dealt with and that you were aware of that had more toilets they either did or would have done. What are you talking about? Two or three thousand, two to two or three thousand dollars greater um, to do more I, in, in those multiple It's come up toilets? maybe um, a handful of times, so yes, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be financially oppressive. Huh? Um, yeah. but however, I will say that um, I think the program's only gonna, going to explode and get busier. Uh, you know, for fit, for calendar year 2016, we t we advertise it in the newsletter. Um, we've talked about it, and um, presumably you're sitting here talking to the newspaper right now. So, so I think uh, it'll explode. So potentially, we really wanted to make sure we had something we could afford and it would be successful. But adding and making it um, more expansive is certainly not any. I mean, it, I think it's I always a good I idea. Labor it, but it's almost like saying we'll only do four per city block. Mm -hmm. You know, the first four <laughs> people in get there. Um, 
I don't know why. Well, it appears to be a profitable thing for the city to do. Every time somebody changes out, we save enough save enough water on both ends to pay for the rebate, eh? Yeah. The council, when it considered this, though, considered a finite amount of money, how to spread it out to as many people as possible. The discussion was multiple family, for instance. Do you provide them as many as they need? You might get someone who wants to come and do their entire multiple family complex, 40 toilets or something like that. So that discussion went on. Also, it's a front load cost program. So we will realize these savings as we move down the road, mm -hmm. but the rebates cost more than the savings in, during the fiscal year. You're hoping into the future it pays off. Certainly. So the, all of those considerations were brought up with the program. But, but Gary, the, the multifamily, <coughs> we can do 40 in one 40-plex building. This is just per unit. That, yes. That we would, we're, we're just limiting per unit. So if somebody had... 40 units in a single building, they could come in and do the deal with us, and we'd it'd meet the requirements. Yeah, and I don't know if that's could do, allowed. If they had 40 they units, could they could do 40 toilets. And yeah. I've had a couple inquiries for this year that are pretty significant size mm -hmm. complexes. So, yes. Could, could. But it's limited by the budget we have. Yeah, I mean, it... it um, did we set it so that when we run out of money, the program stops? What was the budget amount, Nicole? The budget recall? amount... Uh, for fiscal year, this current fiscal year, I have seventy thousand, uh, close to seventy thousand dollars, and for the spread out cost for just the fixture rebate and the Wisecape rebate, it's fifty seven thousand three hundred um, needed, this you know annually. But we had start off money that was rolled over from previous years where we were developing and Im implementing the program. Would you could, could we just ask the staff sure. look at? <laughs> opening up the the per home and the per apartment unit numbers and, and to give us an idea of whether or not it would be a good idea to move forward with that? Sure. Yeah, and from a cost-benefit standpoint, yeah. it would seem like it's a reasonable thing to invest in. <laughs> if it's worth I, I like doing one in a house, it's, why wouldn't it be worth doing two, is, I guess is my question. Yeah. We can talk okay. about that. Gina? I had a question about the landscape mm -hmm. guide. What's your ETA on that? I really that. want it available for this spring. Yes. Uh, because that's when people are going to be thinking about planning. So that that is our hopeful ETA. I, again, I'm waiting on edits from okay. across the across the straight line there. Um, but I do, I, my understanding is that they are working on it and they're very getting very close to sending something my way. And then, of course, I'll send it through all of my superiors before we go to uh, production and let the... Um, City attorney, look at it, and Gary, of course. That would be all your colleagues. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all my colleagues, excuse me. So, yeah, so I'll make sure that they take a look at it and oh, approve for it sure. as well. I, so, there's a little bit of, um, you know, time involved in that process, but I'm very hopeful for spring. I could that do is the happy spring. time for people to think I about agree. making this change. <laughs> Excellent. So. Again, uh, Gary? Yes, sir. Can, can we do something to try to make that happen this year? I mean, I'm, no criticism intended, but I think this <coughs> conservation plan took either two to three years to get through edits just in-house. I'll be happy to meet with staff and see if we can bring an evaluation forward and let the council take a look at it. I mean, otherwise, we're going to be talking about the summer of 18 before you sure. know, we're trying to market it to people or having it ready for people. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. That's Nicole. Yeah. If Would the, you like to speak? You can come up to the you have to table. Come up here, David. <coughs> oh, excuse me. David Hall. Um, I was wondering if you could give a clarification, a little bit more background on the additional savings for the yes, toilets. Yes, I can the, do that. For the flow paste, I have no idea what that means, and also okay. what was considered there. So there, this was considering the cost that we're saving to not on the potable end to not pump the water so that would be our electric chlorine potassium yeah, permanganate but for the for the, the effluent end? yes that would include um, flow paste at the same at the same consideration for chlorine sulfur dioxide alum natural gas and electric Okay, and I don't know what flow paste means. Um, that means as it's coming into the wastewater treatment plant, 
those particular items are required in order to treat that water. Uh, again, Todd Swanstrom would be the best one to answer this question. Maybe less can The higher the to. flow, the more product it right. takes to treat it. Okay. And so if that flow is not coming through, it's not necessary, yeah. obviously, if, since we're not flushing those, that, that water down the toilet. It does not, so this would be the variable cost, I suppose, for lack of a, you know, versus the cost to, we, regardless of how many toilets we replace, we still have to have a, voice, a water reclamation facility. We still have to have staff to man that. Um, yeah, and, fixed cost versus mm -hmm. variable sure. cost. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, could, could council get copies of, of the slide presentation. This is the first I've seen the numbers. and I'm a little like David. I'd like to go over them a little bit more and maybe okay. give you a call. And In fact, Nicole, maybe you could get together with uh, Jen and put that on the web or something okay. so it's accessible. Will Thank be. you. Thank you. Nice job, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the coffee sniffle. It's been like two weeks. <laughs> Staff has nothing further. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. All those in favor? We're adjourned.